Um, so let me just, just finish. Uh, Clumser, we certainly knew these, these, uh, this, this gas is, is, uh, is clumpy. Um, we beginning to understand the, the reasons why we're seeing these kind of unexpected species. So oxygen-rich species in carbon-rich shells, but we also see carbon-rich molecules in, in oxygen-rich uh, shells. Um, internal photons look like they may have a, an effect, but it's very sensitive to what you assume for the, for the, uh, the structure in, the, in, in these embryos. <coughs> because of the amount of extinction of dust can affect that um, uh, very dramatically. It's very easy to switch this stuff off. Just in terms of general models for chemistry, we, we are still trying to figure out how to incorporate these hydrodynamic models and physical structures into, into these objects. Um, we don't do certain, certain reasons yet, but we don't do the chemistry at all well. We don't really know very much about high densities and high temperatures when we need three body reactions. Uh, we have limited information on what happens at, at high temperatures where we may have neutral chemistry going on. And we don't really understand our physics and stuff well enough to, to, to make really good models of, of shocks and shock chemistry. We also neglect the dust. Most of the time that's fine. Uh, the, the collision times between gas and dust are very long, so generally the dust doesn't play any role in, in chemistry. But if you go into the inner regions where, where um, uh, densities are higher, then the gas dust interaction may, may play a role. And certainly there's some information from infrared observations which probe uh, much warmer gas the dust formation zone that they, there's both increases in molecular abundances and a decrease in molecular uh, abundances. Uh, the dust is certainly going to be just uh, uh, formed from, from either carbon, carbon nicious uh, materials or, or from silicate materials, so there are no ices in, this, in these regions, whereas most of our studies of how gas and dust interact in interstellar medium been focused on interaction with icy grains, but I think there's also a need to look at interaction with, with bar oxides and bar carbon as well. So almost going to make a big difference, I think. Certainly, we're getting lots of interesting results from the atomium distribution. We have been overly reliant on RC10216 as our, as our go-to source. Um, we're, at least with ALMA, we can really prove the inner reasons where there's a lot of difficult uh, physics and, and, and chemistry going on. And, and I think I will finish now. So thank you very much for your Thank you so much for your excellent talk. So we have time for a few questions, if any. Yeah, please go ahead. So I have two questions. One is, uh, when we first detected water uh, from IRC plus 10 to 16, which was from SWATS, yep. Uh, we, of course, didn't have the higher transitions that showed it was hot, hot water. But we posited an idea that I don't know that has been pursued. Namely, uh, these AGB stars uh, swell uh, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, a, a radius, in some cases, the, uh, the radius of the orbit of Jupiter. Uh, and their luminosity increases by a factor of 10,000. And if, as we now know, uh, almost every star has a planetary system, you would expect the vaporization of planetary bodies, in some sense like putting a solar system above a Bunsen burner. So I'm, I'm just wondering if some of these chemical mysteries might not be tied, in some sense, to the vaporization of you know, if, if not, you know, the rocky element of these planets, Water, certainly yeah. their, their atmospheres and, you know, Jupiter-like planets uh, will most likely have given up their entire atmosphere, if not their volatile core. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, that's just sort of one question. I've never seen that, that pursuit. And it could possibly also align with the clumpiness, because if you're ablating uh, uh, objects, you know, like a planet, you might not necessarily expect that to be uniform. Uh, you might expect that to be clumping. So, it's certainly, um, uh, I think, a possibility for something like water, as you say, or comets or whatever, being, being, being vaporized. Um, I guess for some of these these clumpy, uh, so so that's certainly a possibility. I think, and as you say, no one's worked on it for a decade or whatever it was. 
But but it's also the hydrocarbons are very. You know, we've got lots of hydrocarbons which show lots of carbon. So these carbon chain molecules, which are so there's other there's other issues. I think that, that so it may be right that the, the oxygen and OH and formaldehyde may be may be traces of of uh, urbanization of volatile materials. Um, but we also know that there are other complex things there which are which, sure. uh, um, which are which are also clumped and which also again can be in hot gas or cold gas. So the the, uh, um, the second question is that uh, it, when I first saw these models that posited UV radiation penetrating yeah. from infinity, yeah, yeah. Um, they always seem fine tuned to produce the water. Uh, uh, the opacities yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the rest, uh, but I was I was always unsatisfied with the fact that if you're going to break apart 13CO, you're going to photo destroy a lot of other molecules, and I yeah, yeah. I never really saw an analysis. I mean, it seemed to be amenable to observational tests because you can't just posit the destruction of one molecule. You've got to accept the fact that if you're going to let the UV in, it's going to destroy a lot of molecules. And I'm just wondering if, since you've been focusing on this, you you think that that's been examined sufficiently, uh, this question of the presence or absence of other molecules that would be photodestroyed, uh, that there's still credence to that notion of yeah. penetration of UV. I think that's a... Uh, so. so China Charge Group have never published anything other than, than uh, the water and OH and, and HC3. I think that plot I showed you, they've never, I can't imagine they haven't done a model where everything is, where full contact on everything. So that's easy to do. I did, a, I did something similar to them just to, to kind of check some of, some of their work, and you're quite right, that it's not just those molecules, you put it so you put it so everything, essentially everything. I mean, when there's not food ones, whatever they destroy, they destroy, everything. they destroy deep in these, so there is, there, there, I, th I think there is issues um, about uh, about some of this uh, stuff, and they haven't been really tested against uh, uh, the chemistry was on in the inner envelopes in particular. I mean, the, the one of these models simply assume there's three percent. When you actually look at how involved the Nazis has got, it's, uh, it's just assuming there's three percent of interstellar photons getting. Uh, as you said, it's kind of fine tuned to get the answer. It was designed to achieve one result, yeah. but it could have. 10,000 consequences that weren't, weren't tested. I mean, many of these molecules that are in the, in the inner envelope that you see, the silicon mark, they're easy, just as easy to create as, as 13C. Right, exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Go back about five slides, you were talking about some models that achieve 10,000 degrees. Yeah. What, what scales are those 10,000 degrees at? Uh, so th these are on, I think I know. Increasing this that are fractions of AU. So he's so in, in, in if I remember correctly in his model, he has a 1.2 solar mass star and a one solar mass companion arc orbiting at about four A E. And we said right now Myros and A G B stars. Sorry? Is one of them an A G B star? And one of them is an A G B star. Okay. You know, radio so observations, radio continuum no. observations show brightness temperature. Yeah. That would totally rule that out. Yeah. Because 10,000 degrees of the human HG region would be yeah. 100 times better than entire that's strong. I think, uh, I mean, this is just the first model he's done. For example, you can still get the spiral effects if you have a planet going around. Yeah, you still so, get so they, they don't get 10,000 degrees. You don't even know what's wrong. Yeah, please. This is Mara, and I'm fine. There's a few other questions here. Um, <laughs> What happens with these molecules because they're going to be delivered to the interstellar medium uh, at yeah. some point, right? So what is going to happen with them? They're going to be destroyed probably, but they... The radiation field eventually will turn into oxygen and carbon plus. So they're going uh, to... Unless, they get, to unless you, can, you, can, you can stick them to grains at some point and take them out on a, a kind of protected mm -hmm. tar in a grain or protected from something. But, but um, the, the majority of these things will get... Question or comments? If 
not less thanks than speak again.